So you just bought your new succulents. What are you going to do next? Do I leave it in this pot or should I repot it? So in this video, I'd like to show you what to do with your newly purchased succulent. These are succulents I purchased a couple of weeks ago and I haven't repotted them. They're still in the same original pot that they came in. Now over on this side are succulents that I purchased from six months ago to a year ago. And I haven't repotted them. They are still in the same pot that they came in. This video is called when to repot newly bought succulents. But it might as well be a succulent plant haul because I have so many. And if you say that I buy too much, no, it's because I still haven't got a lot of these plants. Well, except for that one and that one. <laughs> and those ones. And let me explain why. Okay, first of all, let's go here. Hello there, my name is Liz, a self-confessed succulent addict. Welcome to my channel, Growing Succulents. So this green one here, I bought three, a one, two, three, because I was going to keep two for myself and give one of them to a friend of mine. But then anyway, she changed her mind. So first one, this is Echeveria Mocha. I don't have an Echeveria Mocha, long story short. So I ended up getting three, but I don't mind because that way I can propagate them much quicker and this one is also flowering so I really want to keep those two and then that one I can do a lot more stuff so anyway this one is Orostakis it's just so gorgeous it's got those pink it's sort of a grayish pink so it's like a sword like uh, leaves shape and it is so gorgeous most of these plants that you see in here with no name came from Rodney's and they have succulents but it doesn't have any name so you have to figure out or work out what they are so anyway this one I have the label pinky if you can see there because I don't have a pinky and it looks like a pinky so if it looks like a pinky I might as well get it it could be something else that I already have but I really don't have anything that resembles this it looks like a Shaviana but Shaviana kind of looks different so maybe it might turn out to be a Shaviana but for now it does look like a pinky to me or a baby pinky now this two a one two actually three this looks like a Lawi a hybrid of some sort that one and that one this might even be a bluebird so I don't know. So I only bought it because again, <laughs> because it's something that I might not have. So because Lawi can look so much the same, but it can also look so much different because a lot of them are, if it's a Lawi hybrid, I have uh, Lawis that reverted back to uh, its original form. So this one here is a baby leaf grown Echeveria Exotique. And that one is also an exotic and which is okay I'm just gonna block the Sun but they're so pretty okay can you see that okay now that one that one and that one there all came from the same plant which is an exotic but this one reverted back into a Lawi now this one here is a Chiviria Mundas which is also another oh, okay here exotic as well so they all came from the same plant but look how different they all look so that one is sort of more like the exotic and this one is like uh, you see the color it's just gorgeous more yellowy orangey beautiful grayish niceness beautifulness <laughs> anyway so they all grow differently so that's why this one now having reverted to a Lawi I would like to separate her so she has her own special pot now this one is a Mundas which is also a Lawi hybrid I can't remember exactly now but anyway so it Mundas is oh my goodness my brain is not working right now okay so it's also a Lawi hybrid but you can see sort of the similarity that they are so just full of farina so this one I call it Tromso because I don't have a Tromso until I have a Tromso I will change the name to something else but this might turn out to be something I already have as well. But that one, I still can't think of a name for this one. But anyway, it might even be a bluebird. So who knows? Now this one here, I was looking online. There's a plant called Lawi Cross 
Desmetiana. So that's the reason why I bought this is because for variety of, well, I like to buy different plants that I haven't got. So that way I can find out the growing habits and how to treat them. <laughs> I was going to say the T-O-R-T-U-R-E word, but I don't want to say that anymore because it's not good for metadata for the YouTube videos. But anyway, this one is a Chivaria Canadian. I had a Canadian, but I put it in the garden and now I don't know what happened to it. It disappeared, got hit by the frost or whatever, so I can't seem to find it anymore. When I saw this one, I thought I'll get another Canadian again. This looks very similar to Morning Beauty or Subsisilis, but it has a curly edges. So can you see the pink curly edge tip? So, and that's why I bought it. So it's justified. I can buy something I haven't got. Now, this one here is green ice gasteria. I don't have a gasteria green ice. I've got lots of gasteria, but this one is only cheap. It's only $6. So this one, by the way, is how much are you? $11.29. Okay, -do. which is still a bargain. If you consider the size, I will uh, tell you later on. Anyway, so this one is called... Echeveria Tapsi Turvy, but I believe this is, <laughs> is it gorgeous? Okay, that's gorgeous. Anyway, this is a lilac spoon, a Echeveria lilac spoon or Graptuveria Tapsi Debbie. Okay, so it's another name for that, but this one is just different to my Tapsi Debbie, and I will show you why. So this is Echeveria lilac spoon, also known as Graptuveria Tapsi Debbie. So that's another name for it and with matching aphids that's being attacked by aphids right now but as you can see if I compare the two look at that it looks nothing well it looks similar because of those flicky thing on the end but this one doesn't have any holes so you can see the little dimple so it's like a trumpet but <laughs> so it's got dimples dimples and over here uh, still sort of remnants of a dimple except for that one so that one there that leaf there is very similar to this one so I'm just wondering whether it is the same plant or this could have been hybridized by something else the color right now is different but that's because this has been grown in the shade I would assume I'm assuming it's grown in the shade because this is grown out in 50% UV sun and it's all nice and pink but I do know that lilac spoon or topsy devi will go grayish this color when you grow them in the shade now this one is a chibria or pet and it's $15 and the reason why I bought it is because it's nice and big and also it's flowering and also I ready okay I want to harvest the leaves so I can propagate it there you go so now compared to my au pet over here which I already had this for about almost a year now I think and look at the difference and I could not even take a leaf from this one to propagate so I tried, but it just dried out. So you can see a couple of leaves in the bottom. It just dried out and it would not give me a baby. Hello, mini bell. It's because I don't have a mini bell. So that's why I bought it. So all these plants that you see here with this soil, I am not going to touch them. I am going to leave them in this pot to grow a bit more until they outgrow their pot or they get too big for their pots. And that will be the only time I'm going to repot it. As to what soil mix you use, it's entirely up to you what you want to use. But the thin ones, anything that has thin leaves are much thirstier compared to say something that has like these leaves here so now this one probably because it's flowering i'm gonna use my master succulent soil mix for this one that one can be stressed 
<laughs> and be planted in advanced soil mix and of course this one I'm going to plant in my intermediate soil mix where it can grow really 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 fast so most of these plants I'm going to leave as is where they being planted at the moment so say for example this one they I can leave them in that soil mix that they're in that's not a problem and that will survive so this one because it's getting too big now for the pot I'm gonna transplant this or pot this up or repot it okay so that one because they're quite big plants I'm gonna repot them also to show you that the soil is quite good okay I'm gonna use this one doing one hand so this is my master succulent soil mix and this is now okay to show you the soil mix that was used so this one I can see there's some sand in it but in saying that that's still a pretty good soil mix so if you look at that uh, it's got fertilizers different fertilizers but that's still a pretty good soil mix for this plant so this one will uh, well if I left it on that pot then it can still survive in that pot of course now okay I'm already proceeding to do this but anyway I'm just gonna leave that there for now and let's go continue our video this one now I will repot only because I want this to grow really fast so I'm gonna be planting this in my master succulent soil mix so very similar looking except this one is moist so similar looking soil mix okay put that there or pet so that one as well I will not change the soil because it's in a big pot so I'm just gonna leave that in that soil mix for now okay this is very interesting this is some Echeveria gibiflora hybrid of some sort now these two are the same plant I bought them because I can't decide which one to get because they still kind of different now this one has got a pointy tip can you see that like a topsy-turvy but a bumpy kind of topsy-turvy whatever and it's got thick leaves as well and the ridges so this tells me that this is some um, Gibby flora hybrid and this one so that one is pointy but thick broad leaves and even on the inside there you can see sort of a topsy-turvy it looks kind of blue curls but not quite blue curls so that's why I bought it because of those two pointy and then maybe three or four anyway this one now is sort of the same except the center look how pointy they are see that so now this one as well Gibby flora hybrid blue spur maybe I will repot this too because it's already grown so big and so I need to repot that but if I do leave it in its soil because of the soil mix so when you're buying succulents you have to inspect the soil so repotting depending on the soil that it's planted in so now this one this aloe this mini bell this aloe I can see that this plant here is growing quite a few pups on the side there so this one needs to be transplanted as well or else those babies there uh, are gonna be stunted so it's advisable to if you have a cluster like that then I will transplant it and this one also hang on I'm just looking so that one can still stay there's although there's already a couple of heads so it'd be good to transplant it or you can leave it there for a couple of months to grow and gasteria is uh, they grow between spring and summer and they go dormant when the weather is cold or the temperature goes down so it's entirely up to you whether you transplant it or not but the plant will tell you anyway uh, when to transplant it because it will just outgrow its pot Diplocyclum. I, I diplo, I just call it diplo <laughs> because I don't have a diplocyclum. This, because of the rosette, can you see the rosette shape? Okay, I'm just gonna turn this around. See, the rosette shape is sort of different to what I have. So I have so many Ioniums, but it's sort of recessed, like say that big one there is sort of set in, whereas this one is sort of protrudes out. So this is an Ini. 
and that one is an Audi, and that's the reason why I bought it because I've got lots of innies even this innie here which looks like it's variegating <laughs> that one Ionium Aureum and it looks like it's variegating in it that, that middle one hope it variegates but this one has got one baby all the babies are the same as the mummy except that one that one is sort of a semi eeny outy roundy so anyway so they're asleep right, right now so I can't touch them and even this one now I am just gonna leave it somewhere to summer over okay because they go to sleep when it's summer and they wake up again in autumn so this means that if i do repot this ionium any ionium or any summer dormant plant i am not going to touch until autumn when the temperature cools down so it's important to know what plant you're getting when you're buying a new succulent identification is very important so that way you can know you know when to repot them transplant them or propagate them because there's no point propagating a summer dormant plant in summer because it's not going to grow now these two plants here i bought this about five months ago and i have uh, a couple of Hawortia heidelbergensis I haven't got so that's why now this two needs to be Alunopsis so this one needs to be repotted and although I haven't repotted it for a long time so they still can go a long time without watering but as you can see that will just dry them out and if you repot them straight away this is what they look like this is my other Alunopsis here they're very frost hardy by the way so but they needed to be planted in advanced soil mix and you can see that that one is growing quite healthily so this one as well is going to get planted in an advanced soil mix it's now time to repot this one after five months <laughs> six months <laughs> Now this cactus, this I bought in December and I bought it because of that little bump that's growing on the top of it. So a double decker I call it. This could have been repotted already but I haven't. I left it in the same pot and you can see that it has survived a long time. But then now this is also going to get repotted soon the next couple of days. Also this one, Astropytum ornatum. So anyway this one is the same. That's already been there since Christmas and it's already, it's almost a year. Sorry, it's a year. Oh my goodness. It's November, by the way. <laughs> so this one are Sempervivum cobweb or Arachnoidium. This two, this one I actually don't have. This is quite a big one. So uh, this is just, there's no name. It just says Sempervivum. So I just call it cobweb. But this one looks like Acanta. Canta. Okay, now <laughs> this has got smaller, so if you compare the two, so smaller, the webbing is also different, it's quite beautiful, and this one actually got a few babies, look at all the few babies coming out of there, but this one is going to be dormant in summer, since it's already the last week of spring, well in a couple of weeks time, it'll be summer, so I'm not going to touch them, I'm not going to repot them, I'm going to leave them as is as well. These are Haworthias. I bought this from Ikea on the 5th of the 11th, so a couple of weeks ago almost. I bought a 1, 2, 3 because they sort of look the same and that one might even be related to that one. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and this one 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because I was going to do a Christmas tree. And I'm going to be using them for my Christmas tree. That's the reason why I bought them. But had I not intend to use this for a Christmas tree, I would still repot this because this is planted in, can you see the roots uh, it's planted in peat moss and they like they actually grow a lot of roots so deep roots so you need to plant this in a tall pot or give them room to grow their roots so very easy to grow anyway um Haworthia. so i love 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 Haworthias. by the way plus what's not to love look at all those like window so there are beautiful plants and if I don't have a chance to make a Christmas tree then I will be planting these ones in my garden. Now this one is Ionium 
Logan Rock. Very pointy. It might even be uh, something else. But for now, I need to put a name. So I haven't got one that sort of pointy leaves like this. So that's why I got it. And this one I got in a pot for $4.50 for that tiny little thing. But it doesn't matter. If you haven't got it, then you just have to pay for it. This one is that comes with no name. This pots, these tiny little pots here, they're four dollars fifty each from Bunnings. Uh, now I one, two, three, four. It might be an afterglow. It might not be an afterglow. So that's why there's a question mark. But I have to put a name or else I won't be able to keep track with it. Now this next one here is, I'm still racking my brains as to the identity of this one. It looks very pretty and very farinous. So it's got lots of the farina. They really need to be transplanted. They're not going to last very long in those pots. They're going to dry out and die on you. So now that one, it kind of looks like a Francisco Baldi or Stadivarius Starburs, but also sort of different. So there's so many hybrids nowadays that it's just really hard to pin down the identity. So that one, I still have to think of a name for that one. But this one, I don't have to think of a name because this looks like a chroma. If it looks like a chroma and it quacks like a chroma, it must be a chroma. I already have two chroma, so that's why I wrote chroma three. The problem with chroma is that they keep losing their variegation, so at least the two that I've got. So I put one in the sun and it disappear, and I put it back in the shade at the moment, and it's starting to come back again. And before that happens, I bought another one a few months ago. And then now I saw this one. Maybe this will have a stronger variegation than the other one. So that's why I bought it. But then again, this one needs to be transplanted as well. Now these two are black prints, or it looks like black prints. But I only bought it because it's got slight variegation. And slight variegation. Whether it's going to continue to variegate or not, I don't know. But then... For $8, it's worth having and taking the risk. But anyway, this one now is Graptoveria Royal Flush. Well, at least it looks like a Graptoveria Royal Flush to me. It has some chiseling on some of the leaf surface. I don't know if you can see that, but it's got facets. And also the shape and the color, the pointiness. And this one, because they're planted in peat moss, the same thing. This needs to be repotted have to remove all the pit moss and needs to be transplanted. Now, these ones, they can actually handle the frost. So you can grow this in the garden, but when you get them from the shop, before you put them in the garden or expose them to full sun, you have to slowly acclimatize them. So this one is gonna take me a few weeks before I actually put this out. So Now, these babies here are, the label's already faded, the 6th of November, 2020. So, it's been living in this pot for that long. So, this is a Chagriya Apus, by the way. So, that's Apus. And those are Apus as well. Apus, Apus. And look how beautiful, hang on. I'll just get, oh, <laughs> move that one out of the way. Okay, so that one has got a yellow tinge. And this one has gray. If I pull back, you can see, hang on. So what is the difference between those two? This one on the left is more yellowy, and that one on the right is more bluey. So they're the same, Echeveria apis, but this one is not flowering. That one is not, and but that one's flowering. It's almost finished flowering. Now this one has been growing, or I kept this out, so it's still water. I kept this out in the sun. So all of this, except these two, so this one is really dry i'm throwing it in the air because it's dry see this is also in pit moss and needs to be repotted although in saying that you can see that they can live a long time in this pot because it's a big pot even with pit moss if you continue to water them they will grow so this one's all of them so a one two 
three, four, five. I got five apus. They're going into the garden, but I already have a Trevelia apus. They are the most beautiful plant. They're one of my favorite plants because when they do grow stress in the sun with the right soil, they kind of look like this. Beautiful and gorgeous. Let's go take it into the shade. So this is my Echeveria apis grown in my advanced soil mix. And look how gorgeous they look. See, even with a compare it with that one. See, look at that. Chalk and cheese. <laughs> so it just means they're so different from each other. Look at that. So that's why I love, love, love Apus. Now this one has been in this pot for like three years and it hasn't put out a baby because the soil or the nutrients that it has has non-existent basically. The only fertilizer it gets is once a year I would spray it with my seaweed fertilizer and then now it kept its color and beautiful. Otherwise if they're planted in the wrong soil or the soil is too rich or too much compost in it they're gonna look like this one blue and beautiful <laughs> it's still beautiful when it's blue anyway so this one's now th these ones are about i think may hang on yep this was bought in may 2021 so like six months ago and it's already growing some moss they're also actually another the beautiful plant those moss look at them also the soil is really really wet you can see that the soil's been, so this is Mira, I think, because this, this doesn't come with a label, so you don't really know what they are. But anyway, but they're just beautiful. This one is supposedly Orion, but I don't think this is Orion. This is some sort of latte rose. Again, the 6th of November. It's over a year that's been sitting in this pot, out in the sun, being rained on. This is December. 2020 when I got these ones they come in a set of three can't remember exactly how much they are from Ikea as well but because it's planted in a big pot it's able to survive for a long time so anyway guys that's it for now so I hope I'm able to share some insights into what to do with your newly bought succulents Here's a soil I prepared earlier. I'm taking my pinky. I will remove some of the dry leaves. And since the soil is quite good, I can see some nice healthy roots in there. I am not going to bother this plant too much. I won't give you a hard time, especially... I'm just removing the dry leaves, basically. And in one hand, we go... Put that there. Do one side, tip it over, so that way I can do one side. <laughs> you see the roots sticking out? Anyway, that's all. Now this little pinky, I'm going to put the label, is ready. I got some dirt there, but that's okay. I'm just going to... And this other pinky, because it's sort of the soil has gone down so that also needs to be repotted just put a little bit of dressing and that's it guys so thank you for watching i hope you find this video useful and i will see you on the next video also after repotting this since my soil is still pretty moist i am not going to water that i'm going to leave it for a couple of days to sort of settle down and get used to its new environment before I water it. But when I do water it, I will soak the whole pot for a couple of hours and drain and put it away. And next time I will water it is when the soil dries up. it. I hope you turn out to be an Echeveria pinky.